make a brief video. This is probably going to upload to the website, so if you want to see me doing a lot of this, you can check it out there. The Look Up Group is a petition started by Estrada Gucci, Red Hair. This is a business where I created a red flag between Red Hair and New York. The distance between Red Hairs was calculated by my depth distance ratio, which means the latitude and longitude of the two points and works the same in Excel and in Actors. In Excel, a cell formula calls my depth distance function. Latitude and longitude for each vertical is determined using three different functions. The cell that's being looked up is the city on top. Let's find out what that is. I go to my table, I see that column 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is latitude, and column 6 is longitude. This is a brain tumor on the Red Hair Street. On this street, latitude and longitude are also three lookups to another street with zip code information from the 1999 U.S. Census. In this case, a free lookup approach is it's wrapped by if error. So if an error message is returned, nothing is displayed in the search. Airport searches have cleared the world, but tips are only available in the United States since the data came from the 1999 U.S. Census. Free lookup is wrapped in the if error function. To suppress error messages when there is no match to a specified state in the city, in Excel, getting the formatting exactly as I want it is easy, so I can see each cell as I do the formatting. The distance airports closer than 50 miles is displayed in red using conditional formatting. So how would I do the same thing in the accents? Start by creating a Red Hair Address Database. I'll call it VLOOKUP and Access Distance Data. Double click to open it up. I have a blank database here and I can look. I will use the same zip code reference and look for the airports. Both of these tables are available in the Access database you can download from my website. From the ribbon, I click on the external data tab. I choose Access and it imports data from another Access database. I can browse or I can search by path and then browse. I'll get my airports table and my zip code. I see the two tables in my database. I'm going to pick the category in that group and search by tips. The airports table shows the airport code, airport name, city, country, and state where I do up the search. The airports are all over the world, so the state fields are up in red. The zips table shows the zip code, city, state, county, latitude, and longitude for the United States. In Excel, I filter the airports for New York. In Access, I will make a query that just shows airports in New York. Create ribbon, query design. From the show table dialog box, I click actual airport and then play. In order to see this equation better, I can also use the zoom bar. I can right click in here and choose zoom and shift F2 and I can change the terms to become more bigger or just let the whatever is in the blue. So here you can clearly see where all my port marks are. And I have delimited the value that I'm using from the field with port marks as well. Switch to data sheet two and I see three cities have moved to another port mark, so they can be found in my picture here. As I change information and move off the record, Access automatically saves it and refreshes the record. I can save by clicking on the pencil icon here. Free lookup gives me the information I want. I could get latitude and longitude the same way. This method, however, does not take advantage of the power that Access gives us in the right data. I drag the tips field into the query from the navigation bar and return the field list as the city of interest. I'll link to the survey sheet on the city and on the state. Now let me take a look at the data sheet here. Here I have an error message because the city to 
you are to put a few places, and I am going to pray for you so that you can access Jesse and I more together. Now, I can't even find my screen. I have to click this. I never, I promise to feel one with my Carmella and then God and with you. Since my Carcarian is coming to an end for us, I want the city to come to an end for us also. Now I want to hear about the Holy City here. And now uh, we have 703 residents. We have a lot more residents than we want. We can limit these records by grouping them. Just the total records. Now we have 19 records again. The problem with this is the zip codes are going to be arbitrarily um, mailed around to an area. Instead of getting the zip code from a UZIPA, let's see what the zip code is in our zip code. And I run this again. Now I'm back to lots of combinations. And as you can see, if you look up, you'll get uh, some arbitrary value every time the first one it comes to. And the zip code field, here I have all the combinations. Well, I want to limit this zip code to just maybe the minimum value. Let me go back to the design field. I don't need this lookup field anymore, and I only need this criteria field. I'm copying it, highlighting it, and pressing copy under the zip in the criteria cell under the EN and then paste that same criteria I have for Carmilla as at the data sheet here again. There we go. Now we can see some consistency in that. We can look at where we went, and that is only with the high zip code because I have an extra quarter of our zip code. So let's go back to the design field here. I don't need this column. I have to put in the column header that I want to see the residents in. I want also to get latitude and longitude. I have to double click those and then get to the next one here. I do it all in my zip code. Let me go back to the design field for one or a couple days to speed this up. Instead of grouping by latitude and longitude, I just want to show the first value it comes to. Actually, what I think I want is to leave the group values for a day alone. Let's take off this whole lookup. Let's see what we get with Alice. There are our 19 records. I don't know that we get into the performance. That just doesn't close my door to this growth that we got. But it does uh, make sure we get just the best zip for Santa Monica Center for sure. Ideally, we have an address for the airport and we can get the zip code from that. I save this story by right-clicking on the tab and clicking Save Changes to Start Copying. I call this to airport information. And now I'll close this story. And let's just look at this Excel sheet again. Here I have a combination for every set of data. So between every airport, I'm going to calculate a distance. So what I'm going to do on top of this is make this part of my table. It gives me all the combinations. In this case, I'm just going to close that quotation there like that, and I can drag my field list to the lines just so this doesn't get confusing. I can just right-click and say Copy. I'm going to give these aliases. This one goes for Airport 1, and this one goes for Airport 2. One airport listed down the left and one airport listed on the top. I need the airport code, the latitude, and the longitude in each. And I will look now at the data sheet field. This is information that I want to show. The data looks good. However, I don't like uh, this long row list at the top of the column. And that's because the field name latitude is in both places. The field name longitude is in both places. So must I in QN. So I will specifically label these. I label this one Route 1. I'll press Tab, F2 to edit, Tab 3 to scale. All right, now I have labeled all my columns, so now it's easier to qualify them. And I can still be late with this one. I can type it. I'll give this story a name and the date of other train. The story is a unit cross tab story on the top. This is a few stories. These are quotations for the story. In the row header, it's 
the first or fourth grade and the column headers and second one, it doesn't really matter what we put in the middle because we're going to change it next to the grade as we start. So we're going to make a bar like that. Here's your options. You're going to go to row three and do the following. Trying to define here, I'm going to change what's in the middle of this first sentence just to fill out each column. Here, I'm going to give it an equation. I am going to calculate distance. So let me go grab my plane, pop it here, and I'm going to put the alt F11 for traditional basic editor. I'm going to insert a mod plot. Okay, so now I've got distance function, rank, and area. I can go over and put height here so that it's the additional material grade area. Now here things needs two sets of coordinates. I got to give it a longitude and then a latitude for the middle. Longitude, optionally I could change whether I support it in decimal miles or nautical miles or kilometers. However, we get set to the default. Now I save and pop my cell. It's ready to be used. Now with this cell, I'm going to get the distance right here and I can use a bunch of VLOOKUP in my cell, but it accents me all the way here. And I will save this again before I check my data. Oh, I uh, don't want to discount this again. Let me just go grab the first one and save this again. I would like to save the other one as well so I can look at it again. I just want to do this one here. Let's see how those compare. A few more decimal places than I've got in my cell, but the numbers that I calculate are the same. What I can't do with a family is make everything all pretty. I can only keep my material. So rather than changing the format of the numbers here, I do it all when I set up the material. Close this. Now I'll select my cell tab. And I'm going to click the Save button again. I'm going to create a regular old report, whatever the vision is going to give me, because I would like to change it. This is what my report looks like out of the box when it all changed. I need to format the numbers so that I show any decimal places. I also need to color the rows, and that's going to be a little tricky because in that cell I could just look at them and say, oh, every fourth one is this dark orange, and I'd know it. Then I use the format feature a lot also, but in accents, I don't see the, t the report until it's done, so I have to think of another way to do it. I can use a hidden control to count the rows, and then I can check to see if I'm on an even row, which would always be white, or an odd row, which would be various different colors. That's just one tab that you can sell here. It also comes with three buttons up here. It gives you a lot more tabs so you can get to it easily. In design view, I would like to pull out this navigation menu, and I'll select all the controls that my imaginary line touches and click them to go do the display window. I want my peak size to be at the width and all of this. Now I'm going to deselect my quick clicking option to suggest detail in my rows. I want to format my numbers to be standard and neither of them are fancy. I'm also going to put my page number up here at the top and then I'll get rid of anything else that's in this page footer section and I'll just start trying to try to close it up and it closed up. Now on the report center I I don't need anything from here when I close this section up. Now the reason only going to be a one page report because I could have just not had a page number at all and put a delete or a little picture or put a square point. This looks a little better. Press enter and I will also change that font to something down in the first two columns of color. Double click one of the handles to see if that fits and then give it just a little bit more dramatic as you do then just go ahead and click it. Now here I have my, my rows that I'm showing you. Now if I tap the one over here to the side, these things are great. They give you things to go all the way out. Sometimes it can be a little hard to grab this border, but you can grab the right edge and then drag it back. I need a little more space because if I go and look at this particular page setup, my quick layout is definitely going to be not the best. I'm going to set up the other, I'm going to move it to 14 so I can just see if I'm filling out my row here so it supports the numbers as opposed to the margins. So I'm going to click right here where I have the four headed arrow and I'm going to 
arranged for that I had to come late to work and I had to tell you so I saw I had to select them all and try to set them right and it was a line to the left now I was just in the line that cut me across and I said to my husband why did you have to do it that way and he said yeah I just did it horribly for that reason I got a little closer to her took this little piece of paper that you select for your court itself and then on the top of this piece in the width property you type a very little number in and that says will say oh we actually did at home and it can be this they don't have that down in our little world so I just do a little blur put it up there and select all of the piece and then write it down in there and then I'll also go over all my labels now here I am going to go a bit far because I only see this one row and that's why the, the formatting is a bit tricky because you don't set the top for any of those and you just need to tell me something and I can set the top for that also and try a different square and just tighten it up. I need some way to know which row I'm on. So I come up to Down Ribbon and I'm going to click Check the box for now. I'll just make it up here after the space is worked in. I don't need the associated thing to set the number and that's the width. This is how I'm going to do the width and width. I will call this row number. I know there's people out there that are thinking and they want me to start with the first of two on the key. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. On the date of that, I can type it in here. I will set this to be a clear number. And for the weather sun, I will say override and this is going to be a array number. In order for it to work right, that I have to give the sun a clear number. So I'll put it down here and this can make it invisible if you really want it not it showing up. So double click yes to prove that you know where the visible property on the row are and I do that and also say the text pad I just said I know and I say that's something that I need to put in here. I will save this follow every other label a light gray color and that the color that I'm using is more of a dark blue so I'll just kind of take a guess here. There we go. I'll just click the uh, line that I want and actually it really doesn't matter because that says you need the same treatment sometimes it's white and sometimes it's a medium orange and sometimes it's a lighter orange so here's where I'm going to need to press this row tab just to see where I am now on these cells that are going to be blue if you look at those I need some way of selling them apart so I'm going to use the cloud property these are blue and they're out here press it and click in there and shift click in there select every other area I also get the label and these are going to be called the colors on the format of my detail section is where I'll do all my coloring I select the detail set it to all and actually click in the detail section and then this is in the new all so it's actually going to give me that right now so the section bar is a good place to start and on the format again I'll click on the bolder button and click save it good practice is to put the time date stamp on it so that you're not missing something another good practice is to put a crown on the label because this kind of may mean that you're going to color it into something a variable constant as a, a way of flipping through other details and not just having to write the color there depending on what the row is I want to do something different so I'm going to do a select color sheet and here I'm going to be testing different things so I'll just say you know get the first one that's blue okay and move that row tab to the dark blue either or else it's not going to be really going to be white in the case of the gray color maybe you want to have a very very pale blue so let's just pick the gray color so if we are on white then for each cell in blue cotton cell purple would be this first let's see if the purple row dot tag is going to be white and it is so there's the brown cat color and I'm not getting prompted for that color so it is my light blue cell here I just keep specifying kind of a different color that color is going to add to the gray cotton and now this is going to be orange so I'm going to put up white here other colors they tag as well so I need to give that split so that I know I have that same type of color else if the control tag is going to be blue then that's a way I can change the color 
Bible and it's about to speed up. Uh, Leah is on her first trip, the very tail end of her first trip. Not that tail end, the first trip. She took the child with her two times in Israel and and to Europe. And and now we go to the next big thing. So basically we'll just read through all of these stories and we'll pick up at five and we'll move on. In this case, uh, Seth gave that to her to watch and it was very good stuff about how they were able to go through all of these stories. I like how Paul and Elijah uh, spent time with Jesus that day. I love that one. The next part of the is the Midrash part. So here what I'll do is uh, mod four and I'll work for a remainder of the last four is the title and it's about to read a little of so it's you know Rome history here and then we'll pick up with four and six and these are regular stories I guess because it's not the greatest story but it's still good to pick up so we'll pick up with four and then we'll move on so so let's let's go pick up with Seth so let's see here so Here we are, back to Seth and Seth with the same thing formatting for a little bit. 